So again, while I was living in Hampshire, I made a point of keeping a, what, essentially what you call a memory box. It was just a little thing that I kept by the bedside, and it was where I put things like birthday cards and notes and mementos and photographs and anything really that was noteworthy of my time living there, and it kind of summarized my experience there. Um, and then when I moved back to South London where I grew up, um, I was able to look at this, and you know, five years later, I was able to piece it all together and say, "Oh, this happened then, and this happened then, etc., etc." And even in those five years, you accumulate so much junk that it can be interesting to look back on and pick apart and see you know, what came where and what's worth keeping. So, this poem's called "Leftovers." Underneath the bed frame rests a shoebox full of throwaway tat, crap prescribed a value based on who delivered it. If it's sustainable or fossil fuel, if the crap giver is absent or deceased, if I care either way. I use a shoebox because shoes are meant for travelling, and in my head this sounded like a good reason until I wrote it down. That one love letter lives in there, diluted by thesaurus syndrome and some awkward turns of phrase, but A for effort, let's be generous for days gone by. When we tanked, when I was no longer the most amazing man in the world, it went in the shoebox, underneath the ornaments, newspaper clippings, and a dozen foreign coins. My second letter landed on its feet, beautiful and raw, and straight into the box. Provisions for the day, my name, or hers, can be replaced. I keep them all together. In time, they might eventually fuse and form statue or memorial. A piece of my maternal granddad lines the floor. He used to call me Wee Man late into my teens. And by the time he died, he wanted nothing more than to be scattered by the wife he couldn't love. His name was Frank. Towards the end, his hands had vertigo, so the leftovers looked more like Frank. Thank you. <laughs>